No yeah. Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and we're talking about our astrological signs. I'm a Sagittarius, so I'll let you throw that okay. out there. Okay, y'all are cool. Does that mean anything to you in terms of how this interview is going to go? It gives uh, me a little... Very talkative. <laughs> That's how you could do this podcast Facts. thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I was just thinking about how I think rolling weed on the podcast helps me because then when people start talking, I don't have to be 100% thinking about what they're saying to me, <laughs> and it can kind of like makes me focus on something else so that I'm not like 100% thinking about what is happening in the interview at that moment. I'm mm. not going to do that to you guys. Though. Okay, I was about to say that must not have been a good interview. <laughs> well, I feel like most people like smoking weed is very bad for the interview on average. Uh, I mean, I feel like you're kind of distracted. I feel like when what, people like want to smoke, they want to be focused. Yeah, I think that energy drinks or coffee or alcohol all have good effects. Like, <laughs> like if somebody like drinks alcohol, they get a little bit more open. If yeah. somebody fucking drinks an energy drink, they're more excited. Whatever. Yeah. Weed just makes people kind of like get into their own head, unless they're like a mega extreme weed smoker who isn't affected by it yeah. that much, which a lot of people these days are. <laughs> You guys smoke weed, no? No. <laughs> I don't even know where this came no, from. No, it's just funny because we just, you know, we know people are just see, you know, on interviews and stuff. What yeah. type of smoker are you? Like, do you get in your head or? No, I just get like really laid back and chill. Like my girlfriend doesn't smoke weed, but she loves when I smoke weed because she said I just get so much nicer and more <laughs> laid back. Because she will forever think that I'm like in a bad mood or that I'm like angry, but it's in reality, I'm just like being my normal, like serious self that is around when I'm not smoking. Oh, wow. Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sagittarius can be really intense. But you guys don't do it at all? Nah. That's good. Okay, you know, for the vocals. Mm, yeah. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, I, it, you do get a little raspy, I guess. I've probably damaged mm. my voice a lot over the years. Uh, my girlfriend actually is the one who put me on to you guys. She, but she, really? But she didn't even know about the music side of things. She was just like, oh, yeah, they're, they're sick dancers, and I've watched their channel. Hey, oh, shout out awesome. to your girl. What's her name, if you don't mind? Wow. Fire Mommy. Her <laughs> name's Fire Mommy. Like, <laughs> goals. I want somebody to rep me on a T-shirt. Right? I think she, she always has a good day when I wear the shirt. I think that, well, because... We're moving, right? Or actually, she gave me this shirt like months ago because it's available on her website, learnoftheplug.com oh, or whatever the hell it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but uh, but she gave it to me and then I lost it. Mm -hmm. Like it was just like under a bunch of other shirts and I didn't see it. And now we're moving and I just refound it. So now it's like I have to, oh, have to wear it. That's cute. It was kind of hurtful when, when it was missing the first time around, I think. That's cute. You guys got any merch I should be wearing? Uh, no, we not yet. But when we do, we'll send them out. Of Wait, course. See, there you go. Did you bring have, stickers? I think I have stickers. Stickers? I yeah. could definitely do a sticker. Okay. Yeah. I'll give yeah. them to you. I mean, I have after. I have Guap Dad's uh, stupid bird with a with a do rag on the back of my phone right now. Oh, you know what? Our Cerati sticker would go nice, like on the instead of this. Yeah. Gucci well, actually, you can bird. collage. You can start a whole. Well, I'm super into that. This the sticker collage is like a really underrated technique. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, it's fire. I, my whole laptop is just nothing but stickers. See, there you go. You guys ever date a skater boy? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's such I a skater like, boy thing. <laughs> <laughs> have a really I'm tight dead. laptop sticker I job. I know. I'm so sad because my laptop, it was so covered, but then I spilled a gallon of water on it and I had to get a whole new laptop. Thanks. Or you break up with the skater and then you have to remove all of his sponsors. Yeah, I, at that point, I'd be too lazy. I'm like, just leave it on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, new computer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. Okay, where, where are you, how do you guys meet? Like, where are you from exactly, and how do you guys form? So oh. we're sisters. Yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't even know that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah our mom's going to be pulling up any any minute now. Your mom's coming? Yeah, yeah. she's our manager. Can we get her in here? She, yeah. She wants to. She's down to be on camera? I said yeah. to her, yeah, is but she, she's pretty open. Is she kind of, is she like, like in terms of her adaptation to social media, is it sometimes oh, cringy hit. or is, it, no. is she with it? No, she's, she's with she, it. Yeah. Okay. She's, she's taught it. us things. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like what? No, like it's crazy. The way we started is that um, she was filming us on YouTube because we're really from Iowa. And oh, wow. so it was. Um, I, was talking, I was talking to somebody else from Iowa the other day. Damn it. There's actually a lot of people from Iowa. Yeah, we come like in actors up. and like musicians and well, stuff. Well, if you grow up in Iowa, you just want to get out so yeah. bad yeah. that you just have that passion from day one, right? Yeah. I'm no. from New Hampshire, so I feel you. Okay, so we on the other side of the mm. country. <laughs> right, but but like everybody, you know, wants to get out. Is Gee, that, mom? that might be her right now. This might really be mom. Yeah. Mom reveal. Uh oh. Is it's it our mom? mom. I see her shoes. Hey, mom. Mom. <laughs> How you doing? You want to hop on, mom? She said I'm good. <laughs> well, now I'm really interested to know what you guys' dad looks like. Oh, he's not in the picture. No. But yeah. But she, is, is your mother white? 
Yes, Filipino, Filipino white. white. See, there you go. Her dad's black. See, there you go. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to pick out the mix. <laughs> but not, it, it all started on YouTube. Our mom was filming us. We had a third sister that was in the group, but you know she didn't want to do any more different vision. Oh, okay. But it was when it was three of us, she would film us and just throw the videos on YouTube. So it was like a family kind of flip book or whatever. Mm -hmm. Starting at what age? Uh, we were like six, seven, eleven. And she was just kind of pushing you guys to like do creative stuff in general, yeah, just, dance stuff, mm -hmm. music stuff. What was it exactly? Whatever we were feeling, it was just like, oh, we had a routine. Let's film it, put it on YouTube, and it really just catching, you know, a lot of uh, people, great audience, and they really stick in. Like these are people from the beginning that were like, you guys don't know Sarati. We watched them when they were young, and they grew up. They now have kids, and it's, it's crazy. So, so there's some people that have like the mega long history of knowing yeah. you guys yeah. are up to, who just happen to be weirdos who are watching like ten year olds on YouTube. <laughs> Not, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for like. At least the females oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah no we have a really big fan base but she was hip to just putting this on youtube having us post all the time and that's how we kind of just got everywhere every time we go to an event they're like man we keep on seeing y'all everywhere that's because our mom was like y'all just post 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 but post, even post. down to like music and fashion and stuff like that too so. right so did you guys know did you realize like what you were doing in that moment when you were young making that kind of stuff because the other day my friend showed me this video of his mm -hmm. four-year-old daughter and she just straight up like set his phone up press record and was just like Hi, YouTubers. How you doing? Like, it was just so trippy for me to see that she yeah. fully, like, has watched enough YouTube videos that she understands what it is yeah. to be a YouTuber. And that was her first instinct as soon as she had a moment with his phone free. Yeah. Like, for that us, bugged me out. We grew up around music, like family reunions, dancing, stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just like a natural calling. Right. Yeah. It was like fun. It wasn't like, oh, we have to do this video so we can get views. I mean, yeah. now that's kind of like the thing. Right. People, like, even our baby sister, yeah. like, She's into watching YouTube videos and she'll set it up in her iPad and everything. So it's a whole different ball game for social media now. Definitely. So how you guys were just sort of doing the dance thing mm -hmm. primarily on YouTube. That was that was how it all started though. Mm -hmm. It was like dances and then we were doing YouTube covers to songs and then when we moved out here in two thousand eight we were doing like school tours around LA. Oh wow. And um yeah, those them schools was it was hard to crack but wow. they was all Pretty messing shocked. with us. <laughs> yeah, no, we was we was in there deep, but we were people just were really messing with us. So But you're leaving Iowa and you're going to some of the most gully schools in America <laughs> yeah. just showing up and just being like hey let us entertain you or like like, like yeah i mean how'd I go over? when you're coming from like the midwest you're kind of like open-minded yeah. you don't know what to expect you're just like oh yeah i'm about to go perform not knowing what's really going to happen right like, so. when we first moved out here we got robbed by our neighbors and like, we, yeah. like your house or yeah really were yeah. you not locking your door because you're from iowa and no we locked it it's just like they <laughs> the knew the in cracked a little bit they knew <laughs> oh, the really? ins and outs <laughs> Like these were like we were friends with their kids and like we went to you know Halloween trick or treating and you know they didn't really have much so we made like costumes for them like really we was playing on the Wii Wii and like laptops. So you really and knew them and they were obviously. yeah yeah what and like people around the neighborhood were like yeah snitches get stitches but they did it really yeah. So you feel like you guys just like we're not ready for the lifestyle out here or like or like how grimy people can be? Um, yeah, we weren't. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was a wake up call. Yeah, LA is way different from Iowa. Where did you guys stay at when you first came out here? It was Long Beach. Yeah. East side oh, Long Beach. It goes down to Long Beach for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. My friend they just cleaned got his it up car now. stolen. Yeah. <laughs> My friend was just got his car stolen in Long Beach, but then like I saw him. I'm like, man, how the hell did they take your car? He's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I left the keys in the car. <laughs> no, that's crazy because I got my car stolen recently. Is that's a thing really? in Long Beach? And she it? got her car that's yeah. Theft? Car yeah. theft, yeah. But I mean, it was just funny because, like, if you were to look at his Instagram story, you would think that he had, like, fully just gotten his car taken, that he wasn't at fault at all. And then as soon as I brought it up to him, he's like, Yeah, I did leave the keys in there. But uh, I just thought it was pretty funny that, like, he crazy. would not admit that on his story. You guys still stay in Long Beach? Yeah. yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Did you, like, upgrade the, the spot where you're staying at a little bit? Because there's de definitely levels to. Long I mean, Beach. yeah, we were in Long Beach for a little bit, and then we went to South Central, and mm. that was way different. So you guys are really <laughs> just trying out all the hoods, yeah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to find a gang to let you in or something? <laughs> we was not out here searching for a gang. Trying to find a home. <laughs> <laughs> All the lost no. girls of Long Beach. <laughs> oh, that, hey, it has a nice little ring to it. I like that, though. That sounds good, yeah. yeah. So Roddy is gone. It's a, or no, the album is just called The Lost Those Girls of Long Beach and Iowa. Yeah, yeah. we're going to figure out how to make that, that work. Right. Okay, so, but overall, that, that was the move. You guys came out here and just started to try to, like, figure it out in general, and, like, the school tours was just part of it? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, our mom, she's, like, if we didn't have her, we don't know where we would be. She, mm -hmm. like, really just saw the vision and wanted something great for her children. So, 
you know she found the connects and plugs yeah we got a story we needed like to whatever do. event like just like whether it was like taste of soul or just like a bunch of events yeah. just throw throw us out there and perform and it's not like oh she made it's like this is something we wanted to do for a long time mm. like you know college could have been an option but you know performing is what we like to do Whip entertaining in shape but part of um performing in la we also hopped on YouTube because, you know, go through music industry, it's bad deals and stuff like that. Very we were in a bad one. Yeah. Oh, you were in a bad deal. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it was like a production deal. But we ended up waiting that out and actually just going to YouTube and actually getting a fan base. So we just, oops, sorry, hit a million on YouTube, hit a million on Instagram like last summer. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of like probably where your girl came up. She's seen us like just everywhere. So Right. Yeah, we th- we had to escape to social media. That's crazy to think that you guys were grinding for that long. Yeah. You've been grinding for like 10 plus years. Yeah. And you're yeah. just kind of finally starting to like really get where you feel like, you know, and it's obviously like you're still have so much further to go. Mm-hmm. But just to think that like even, you know, getting that million on YouTube or whatever, that's a big milestone. We just got our plaque too. Really? Yeah. Well, it takes them like six months to send you the plaque, right? Right. It's a- How long did it take us, man? It was like a year. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> The Over baby Ryan. got his right away. Thanks, yeah. Susan. Susan, the CEO of, of YouTube, is evil, dude. She fucking has so I was much like, favoritism going on. We've been doing on. this for a long time. We was we actually like at one point two now, so it was like two hundred thousand subscribers later. But you know, we're happy that we got it. Period. Yeah, it's an important milestone in every young girl's life. For if real? they make it that, to that level of society, that is, it's a big goal. No, yeah, but by the time I got my million plaque, it was like they already had like a new million plaque, yeah. like right <laughs> after, like a way fresher one. <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm stuck send with this back. Give me the other one. Yeah, way. <laughs> exactly. I'll send you guys like 30 bucks shipping. Just send me the new one. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, okay, so in terms of like, was there ever a moment where doing the sort of dance content on YouTube really started to hit off, or like where where it really went viral? Yeah, it was our yeah. lit playlist because oh. we make a bunch of playlists that have different themes, like yeah. get over your ex or twerking. It doesn't matter. Playlists are big on YouTube in general. Like all yeah. those all those channels that just have the live stream of like the chill music to study to or whatever. You yeah. ever see that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. But ours was like an actual visual. So on We're top of us and getting lit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's smart. And singing and rapping and all that stuff. Like, like you're not going to make any money off the ads, but you can just entertain, entertain people, people and yeah. build a fan base through it. Yeah. Exactly. That's tight. So with that, and then even on Instagram, we were doing dance challenges, whether it was like Stir Fry Migos, we did that at the top of the year, uh-huh. by Black Youngsta, a lot of just L.A. ratchet mixes and stuff like that. I was watching all, like some of you guys' um, compilations and mm-hmm. different dance videos, and it feels like you guys got a lot of mileage out of the Block Boy dance. The, oh, wait, the, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. the shoe. Oh, yeah, it was, it was hot. Like, especially with being on social media, you got to keep it was was new. So yeah. even like the whoa. Yeah, the low, the floss thing. Yeah. I felt mm-hmm. like you guys, like, that's kind of like the business that you're in is to be, like, ahead of the curve in terms yeah. of all that shit, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to make it you, though, too. You yeah. can't be looking Swag like it out. <laughs> yeah, that was tripping me out is you guys were, like, combining so much, so many different things. I'm like, I'm just used to seeing, like, because I am I was always watching Blog Boy do that dance before it mm-hmm. blew up and always was just thinking, what the fuck is he doing? Like, what is that? <laughs> Did you ever do it one time? I'm gonna be honest with you. No, I've gone like this, but I've, I've I, and I see what they're doing with their feet, and I think I could definitely put the two together. Yeah. But it's just a certain point as a 35 year old white guy that you're just like, you know, maybe I'm gonna just leave that alone. I'm gonna let the kids have that. I feel like it's those moves, you know, where you rub your stomach and tap the head at the same time. Yeah, like, where yeah. it just kind of looks crazy because you're doing two different motions. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. That's actually really interesting. And I feel like NLE Chaba kind of like took the the crown for being like the craziest like young dancer yeah. in terms yeah. of the rapper world yeah. at least. Because <laughs> he's really like athletic with it. Like he is sh- he extends his foot backwards so far that sometimes. Energy. Yeah, it's crazy. Is that is that the key to to the dance thing? Like, what is the key to like yeah. making those the the fans of that type of stuff love you? Yeah, it's the energy. It's the energy and the swag behind it, making yeah. it like look cool mm. like you can have any dance move but if you make it look and make fire, it look easy too yeah mm. like everyone be like oh they did it. i can do it are people looking for a lot of tutorials on that kind of stuff or is it more about just people wanting to see you just be great with i it? think it's both it's, it's crazy because we just did our loyal music video out now make sure y'all go watch it mm. um we did you know more of like a choreography choreographed dance and they're like we want to see you guys teach us how to do it do a dance tutorial so 
I don't know. It's maybe we just look really good doing it. Yeah. So people just want to learn how to Were do it. Were you always picturing that you would eventually start doing music videos, or that is that that can't be your first music video, right? Oh no 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 okay. no no. We've we've done other music videos, but um, like being signed to Rock Nation, that was our first debut mm. music on video. an actual lot. Yeah, it was like a whole movie. We That's had like the crazy. big gimbal rig camera mm. and everything. So did you feel like a star? You feel like Beyonce for a minute? Yeah, you know, you know, what, um, the the music video Bruno Mars and um, what was it Uptown Funk? That's what it felt like, or really? like Chris Brown's Yeah three times because it was kind of like that that vibe. I got really you. big production. We had extras and all that stuff. How did that conversation with Rock Nation start? Um, but you know, so we had the performances, and there was A and R Earl Johnson that um was coming to those shows. And we always had a kept we kept a relationship with him, but he mm-hmm. was at Roshan Records. But when he moved over to uh, Rock Nation, he was like, "Well, I have this opportunity. You guys want to, you know, go there?" And we're like, "Yeah!" And so we had a showcase, and the former president Benny Pugh, we showcased for him, Omar Grant, and he just loved us. But we had recorded a couple of songs before, and um, "Loyal" was one of them, and so they instantly was rocking with that song. So it was just, you know being consistent and having something to offer like we had like a million followers then and like just had a fan base so now it's just getting music we write our own music so it was like pretty much of a layup but they just saw the vision was like yeah let's just sign up you guys have always written your own music you never had help in that regard um well, not, we don't turn down yeah. writers but for the most part yeah like our whole ep we wrote that's coming out on the, on the night. Make uh, sure I go check it out. I think it's too because our August content night. is different like we don't smoke or not smoke write about that type of stuff yeah. like partying and everything else like that or sex so oh so you like, guys are trying to be a little bit family friendly in that yeah. sense yeah because even with our youtube like it's like ages from like seven to you know grandmas be watching us and stuff like that so we just want to keep our music for everybody not corny you know people be like oh you don't mm. cash y'all don't that's kids bop no you could just make music for everybody it's great for movie scenes it's great for commercials mm. radio it's a lot you can do with it than just be you know do you ever feel like that could hold you back because when you look at a lot of the female rappers who've blown up over the past year or two it's like yeah cardi b megan yeah. stein they're very explicit i remember when Nicki minaj used to rap like in her early days mm-hmm. she used to be rapping about getting her booty eaten and shit and then she actually <laughs> stopped yeah because she started to get like the young girl fan mm-hmm. base and then she pulled back on that and then it's kind of crazy to think that now like megan stein is huge and that's mm-hmm. she'll say that on any song she'll be like mm-hmm. motherfucker eat my booty <laughs> and it's just weird to think that like rap has changed that much in that short period of time i feel like everybody has their own lane Mm -hmm. and if we wanted to do that we can always grow into that later on yeah so we feel like um the way we're going is just like we're creating longevity so we start here and if you want to as we mature we'll get into not necessarily eat my booty but like (laughs) yeah that's a different level that's like the upper (laughs) echelon right you know there's like there's different music for every there's different audiences there's there's people people that are in the world yeah Mm -hmm. so some people want the content that we make yeah yeah a lot of people tell us it's like really refreshing hearing our music so that's really great to hear yeah that's dope is it ever like a thing where you feel like it's weird having that separation between the image of yourself that you put out there through the music or through youtube and then like your actual personal life which i'm sure is messier and less clean cut than the image that you put out there sometimes uh, what you see is what you get with yeah. us so i mean we still listen to like make the stallion and stuff yeah. like that but we're just like the you we, cover we, your ears we, at the dirty parts no, <laughs> no. we like we, we you know it's a it's a real world a lot of people experience a lot of things maybe not a young age or whatever but like for us we live what we talk about like mm. we can't be not true to what we say because mm. that's just either you just make it harder hypocrite. yeah yeah and plus we have like younger siblings we want them to enjoy our stuff yeah. too so. mm. and then we just noticed too like you know most people are like oh want to be perfect a role model like we, don't, we get it like no one's perfect but we are a role model to our fans so if we can lead them in a positive way or like give them confidence strength like even with our fans you know there's girls that had tumors or want to commit suicide or like we're getting bad grades and we're able to like make them want to do better like recently we had a fan that passed away and really? she had um a syndrome disease and you know she was going through treatment and now she's about to have her funeral but like she was coming to our events and and dancing to our music and and, and doing the dance moves that we were doing and like giving her a reason to like want to live like most people that you know going through things they're just like eff it i'm gonna just sit down but like for us to give them something content wise like that makes us happy and and oh uh, yeah yeah mom's chiming in the back oh yeah hi mom (laughs) no but yeah i think that that honestly is like kind of the value Mm -hmm. of 
YouTube in a lot of ways is that when I think about it, like I was growing up watching, you know, Saved by the Bell, Full House and all this shit. And it's like, that's kind of what you're taking your life lessons from. Mm -hmm. But if you're like some young girl and you could look at you guys, I feel like that young girl could potentially be getting a lot more information about what their life is actually going to be like mm -hmm. and what the actual concerns are. And like, I think that's a big part of why people are so drawn to the YouTube thing. Yeah, it's real realistic and relatable. Yeah. And it's just, you know, people can actually kind of learn from it mm -hmm. and like live experiences to a certain extent before they have to actually go through yeah. themselves those things themselves when i think about all the things i got caught doing when i was a kid <laughs> that i could have been watching like crime tutorials on youtube and I been, like, <laughs> yeah. not getting busted shoplifting because i would have like, watched a video and been like those black balls in the ceiling those are cameras like, <laughs> they will catch oh you <laughs> did you guys manage to like stay out of trouble throughout your earlier life when maybe all this stuff wasn't going so good or was there ever like rebellious phases where all of a sudden one of you was just like off doing some crazy shit Everybody has a time in their <laughs> life where they rebel. That's a teenager thing. Exactly. That's actually why it seems crazy or like interesting to me that you guys seem like you are still super tired of your mom, that you guys are still like on the same mission that you've been with, yeah. on mm -hmm. for all these years because so many people would kind of like fall by the wayside. Oh, think? yeah, of course. Like there's times you want to give up or you feel like, oh, I need to, I'm sacrificing my time. I want to be social and be, or be in a relationship. But our mom kind of like kept us, you know, in a, you know, zone, like even just for me, like this is something that I wanted to do for her. This is something that she wanted to do. So we realized, oh, instead of going to these parties, I need to be in the studio or I need to be rehearsing or, you know, but everyone has slip ups and stuff like that. So I'm not going to say, you know. But nothing too overwhelming? No, no nothing crazy. You guys never been arrested? No. Okay. But you know what's crazy? For, we, okay. <laughs> that you're planning on it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, it was 4th of July, and, you know, I, we were living in Long Beach, but I had a friend that was from L.A., and my mom's like, you better take care of my girl or whatever, because I'm freshman, this mm. is L.A., come on now. So we go there, and she's like, um, it's like later on at night, she's like, yeah, I don't know if I can take you home. And I'm like, you told my mom you could take me home. And, like, there's police because, you know, this is, like, Gardena area. And they're like, yeah, you guys have to clear out. And I'm like, I don't have a ride home. And so I didn't want my mom to drive up there. And, like, I had a pocket knife with me, too. So, like, I didn't know if, you know, it was mm -hmm. going to be crazy. And so, like, I didn't want them to check me. Like, oh, she got something on her. So I gave it to my friend. And then they took me in the back of their cop car and was like, oh, we're going to just put you, take you to the station so your mom can come. But they put me in, like, a holding cell. It was, like, weird. And I'm yeah. just like... I was like what 15 and wow so i didn't get arrested but i was waiting for my mom inside of jail so so i don't know if that counts but sure i song about that yeah i was in the penitentiary <laughs> for like 15 <laughs> minutes <and> I, uh, <laughs> no but that is traumatizing like i went to the jail overnight one night for like 24 hours i was in the fucking holding cell yeah. in in manhattan because i was at a party and these girls that we were hanging out with mm -hmm. were throwing bottles out the window and hitting cars on like the 15th story of an apartment in Manhattan, oh my God. and they ran up in there, and I told all my friends like, "Nah, don't don't rat on them because if you rat on them, then then you know yeah. you're, you're snitch, whatever." Yeah. But they arrested every single one of us. They arrested oh, wow. like 12 people were at this Damn. house. But yeah, I always think of that that 24 hours like the, probably the worst 24 hours of oh, my you're life. Oh, you're a G. I felt a like a dick. fucking gangster <laughs> like, for sure. Free Adam 22. <laughs> Dude, the food was so bad that like that alone was the hardest. You know the stuff <sighs> I had to eat. Dude. They give you ramen noodles. Not even. They're giving you like Bologna a sandwich. sandwich, just two pieces of white bread with like the tiniest little dot of peanut butter in the middle. And I'm just looking at it like I would never eat this. <laughs> in a million years. That's torture. Right? That's so horrible. I mean, I'm just not used to this shit. I'm, I'm, I'm living a relatively comfortable life for a while now. <laughs> um, okay. So where do you guys sort of like, like, is it weird for you to, to manage the, the YouTuber thing as well as the musician thing? Has there been any kind of growing pains in terms of, uh, figuring out that because like some some people would say that you like can't do both at the same time yeah i mean we edit and film our stuff mm. so like we went on a radio run we were trying to <laughs> wow. it was almost a month but we were trying to like vlog and edit and throw it up at the same time yeah while eating and making sure we have a bunch of energy and stuff it's hard it's not an easy job yeah yeah, definitely. No, definitely. Because, like, I mean, if you if you blow up, like, you can have, like, a team who fucking does a lot of the stuff for yeah. you and everything. But you guys are still kind of at that level where you kind of end up having to do a lot of shit yourself. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I feel like when you have a team, like, if you're if you're doing YouTube before you get your team, it's like you kind of know what works in your blueprint. Mm -hmm. So when you get a whole team, it's like, okay, are they going to, are you going to lose that it factor about you? So we like to be hands on, even with our music video, like, we help edit and everything. Right. So... We want to be dipped in and everything, but if 
when we when we get that team it'll be great a great help that's definitely the way to do it yeah because yeah. it's like like I've, I've seen that before where like rappers have called me and they've been editing their own video and i'm just like holy fuck like i know how to do that but i never would have in a million years <laughs> thought that you would know how to do that but yeah. it's so important because mm -hmm. then you know a lot of rappers just show up to the video shoot and they're not thinking about the actual final product mm -hmm. But if you can like envision it, then you kind of understand what you're going for and you understand the shots that you're going for. I feel like that could be really beneficial. Mm -hmm. What do you guys listen to aside from your own music? Everything. Um, yeah, we were raised off a lot. So whether it's like 80s rock or like 90s R&B to 2000s. But like right now, what's popping right now? Oh my God. Sweetie, Mega Stallion. Yeah, anything lit. Because everything power. that's out right now, mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Well, Drake just like, dropped his 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 um his past hits compilation. Yes. Yeah. and I was like, yo, <laughs> this is taking me back. You put it on, I didn't hear it yet. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, really? Yes. I was confused because I thought it was on new songs, and I no, posted no, 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 on no. Twitter as if it was new songs, and I got a bunch of responses like, "You fucking idiot." Yeah, <laughs> we was so we was stupid. we was listening to it on the way here, and I was like, "Man, this is great." Classics. Yeah, our stuff is on shuffle. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Is it hard for you guys to date given the closeness and the unity and how hard you're working on the group? Hell, mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I mean, like, you know, if every everyone wants love and, you know, to be with another person. It's just finding but... somebody who doesn't want to, like, use you for clout or yeah. someone who can understand, like, hey, I'm busy too. Mm. Yeah. It might not look real and official right now because I'm not in the limelight, but I'm working hard. It's yeah. got to be so weird to be a girl mm. with clout and have scumbag ass dudes trying to use you for no, it. That's so it's... weird. It's bad enough that dudes <laughs> are trying to use you for, like, sex and stuff. Yeah. The clout <laughs> thing is way worse. Yeah, no, that's horrible. <laughs> That's horrible. What the fuck? Yeah, and I, I think about it too because like you guys are so tight that it's kind of like if you were gonna date someone, then the other one's gotta fuck with them too. If they're gonna yeah. be around him that much, and then like for you to fuck with them, but then also not feel threatened by them, it's gotta be yeah. like a whole thing. Right? No, we we like bring not the actual person, but like picture Instagram. Like, what do you think about this person? I got bad vibes from him. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know, it's funny too. Like she'll she'll be on the phone, or I'll be on the phone, and we'll press that person. See how they can handle it. Yeah, mm. like if you can handle my wrath, then I can mess with you. Mm -hmm. Girls love doing that. They'll always like grab you, like the friend, like when the when the girl you're talking to is around they'll grab you and be like listen i like you but if you hurt her <laughs> i will kill oh you and i've had that happen so many times in my life and i'm just listening to her. i'm like listen like i probably ain't gonna be talking to her in a week so just chill like this is not necessary energy I'm right dead. here no it's funny because we'll actually shoot on the person and like that's where we really get them is like mm -hmm. if you can handle me cracking jokes on you whatever and mm. attacking a little bit and then i rock with you that makes sense to me yeah do you guys consider yourselves like the claremont twins in any way Nah. No. <laughs> no, it's crazy. People think they were twins, though. Right. And we actually met them, too. They're really sweet girls. Yeah, they're, they're super nice. Party. I met them this summer. Yeah. Free Sinead. <laughs> right. Free, free the scammer one. Um, they Because like, I seen the other one at a party the, on Sunday, yeah. and she's dating my friend. Really? And all of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, Like I never have seen you doing anything besides being with your sister. So yeah. this is really fascinating to me. Oh, I can only imagine if one of us went to jail. Then the other one would have to find love right away, right? Or even, me. or even like city girls, like Young Miami really did that thing because y'all started together and then your homegirl left. Right when you have to like really take this stuff to another level, I'm pretty sure people thought like she's not gonna be able to do it, and she really did it. So that is crazy. But at least Free JT, like, JT killed all her verses. Oh yeah, so putting out music, it's like yeah. she's there. Oh that new record, girl. Mm -hmm. Come on, <laughs> hey, it's time to get it when they play it. I saw yeah, I gotta, my jam. I gotta give my city girls research. I ain't listen to that much besides that one song. Oh, act up. You can get snatched up. Yeah, I, I listen to act up. Oh, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I listened to it with totally different ears after I learned that Yachty wrote it. Uh. Cause it's kind of cause he's talking about fucking with a scammer dude, and I'm like, that's so funny to me because Yachty was a scammer before he blew up as a rapper. Wow. Yeah, and like so, so him like writing that song for them, where they're basically like talking about how much they love the type of guy that Yachty was before he blew up as a rapper. It was just like, cause I'm gonna just write about me. Exactly. Makes you a good writer when you experience that. Exactly. <laughs> See, there you go. Come, came from the heart. You guys think you could write a song for Lil Yachty, like turn the tables? Heck yeah. Really? I feel like we could write we could write anything. Bar one. Like <laughs> yeah. when, just rapping about having red hair. And <laughs> yeah, just, nah, yeah. There's I don't know, eating corn dogs. I don't really know exactly like what man, that would be hard. It would be hard to write a Lil Yachty verse, I'm not gonna lie. You just gotta observe. Yeah. Do your research. But I've been around him a whole shitload of times and all I ever really see is him eating pizza, eating corn dogs. <laughs> 
just that's all I ever noticed. It's just like, man, you'd be eating some terrible food, bro. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear me coughing and stuff, I'm a little under the weather. Oh, you're so. trying to really? hold your coughing? Yeah. yeah, I'm like... Really? Yeah, we're, we're both you probably really like, sick. you lying. You, you are a smoker coughing like that. <laughs> nah. You guys um, have been partying? Uh, nah. No. no. I we, think there's like a flu going around or something like that. Yeah. In Long Beach? Yeah, probably in Long Beach. <laughs> <laughs> the Long Beach yeah, flu. The Long Beach <laughs> flu. Makes sense to me. <laughs> I was going to bring some Lysol and like some Palo Santos. Honestly, this up. is not the cleanest room you've ever been in in your life, so that's not the worst idea you ever heard. It's not but. bad. We've been mm. in worse. It could be worse, but not that much worse. At least the old spot used to have roaches and shit. That was, oh. that was when I saw Hoodrich Pablo yeah. Juan jump out of his chair because he saw a roach. That was that was when Y'all I caught that to on leave. camera. No, it was oh. before the interview started. Uh. But also, I used to have my cat in the studio. And uh. Some rappers are scared of cats. That was one weird thing I realized. Cats. They're a little bit unpredictable. Yeah. Not mine. Mine is the most predictable motherfucker on <laughs> earth. <laughs> but I feel that. You guys don't have pets or anything? Yeah, we have two chinchillas and a French bulldog. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Those aren't my pets. I have. So there is separation in ownership of the pets? Yes, but yeah. I will take care of. I'll clean up the poop for the dog. Mm. Only because I don't want to smell the poop. And then, like, chinchillas, like, that's a whole nother. A whole nother world of poop? Just a whole nother animal. It's a different. I don't know. I just can't really connect. (laughs) It's a vibe. It's a vibe. Yeah, for certain people. It's a dog shit vibe. You know, I felt so bad because I'm like, I'm touching the fur and I'm like, people were really killing chinchillas and wearing them on their backs. Wow. Does that make you feel different about wearing fur and leather? Of course. No furs. Really? You're over Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Those are animals. Like, what if people were just taking people and taking their skin and wearing them on their backs? (sighs) Yeah, but don't you think animals are really just there for us to use? No. No? No. We're supposed to live with them. Like, you're not going to get, you're not going to get PETA after us. I'm honoring, (laughs) when I eat an animal or I wear an animal, which I probably almost never do because I'm not wearing a lot of leather, but uh, (laughs) if I were to, I feel like that's that animal's sacrifice to me. Like he's, you know, it's, we, we're all part of this beautiful system of life. But then in reality, it's, it's not like they caught this animal in a field or anything. It's like yeah. he was stuck in this terrible fucking Jail torture cell. chamber for his whole life. It's actually mm. kind of sad. I don't know if they even make like ethical leather, like where the animal was killed in a certain way. Probably not. Your mind thinks. Like imagine you could go into the Gucci store and you could yeah. buy like... One this pair is, of shoes yeah. for six hundred, or you could buy the same pair of shoes for nine hundred, but the animal was killed in yeah. a more ethical way. It's like eggs, caged free. Exactly. <laughs> they had that in the Gucci Look. store. It would be so weird. Yeah, it would be weird. <laughs> People probably be fed up. Like this is too much thinking for me to choose. I'm fed up just thinking about it. Um. So, have you guys ever actually met Rihanna? Or are you still working on that? Oh my god, still working, working on, on it. it. We get but... closer and closer. Okay. Really? The first time I actually seen her perform was at the Kendrick Lamar's toy in drive. Lots. Yeah, I'm actually when she, she has a picture on her Instagram when she when she performed. Uh-huh. There's someone on. I'm on her shoulders. I'm on your shoulders. Yeah, you're on my shoulders. And I'm like up there, and I just circled where I am. So I was on Rihanna's Instagram. Wow. Yeah. There but we're go. doing her Savage X Fenty. Yeah. So that's no, close. yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. That's yeah. what's making me we have curious a photo about shoot it. Tomorrow. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's crazy. That's gonna be like a, that's like a massive brand already. Like yeah. if, even though it's brand new, it's still like gigantic, huh? It is gigantic, and that's not the only one. We have Forever 21 with Kate K-Swiss. Swiss on, it's gonna be on Times Square, like in next week, I guess. Yeah. What, that's like a brand type deal that you're doing? Yeah, we did like a whole campaign, so that's we out here trying to get to the bait. You haven't gone Fashion Nova yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's old school? Yeah. That's not old school. Well, I'm just saying. But like, that was like our, <laughs> I yeah. think our full Forever 21, we did something with them first, but then we switched to Our major fashion. thing was like Fashion Nova. Yeah. That's what's up. Going hardcore for that. I'm on the Fashion Nova men's team, so hey. I totally, totally understand where you fashion guys are coming Nova from. Fashion Nova gang. Yeah. It is a gang. Fashion Nova. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just in London, and that's like the home of Pretty Little Thing, and you see yeah. those fucking logos everywhere you go. Really? Yeah. All the cabs have Pretty Little Thing. Like everywhere. unicorns, right? What? There's unicorns. I didn't see any unicorns. No. That's because we went to Coachella. Oh. Okay. I thought that was like their thing, but I guess they have like when we went there, they had a bunch of unicorns with their logo and stuff like that. Oh, Mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Because for a second, I thought you were accusing them of really having unicorns, and I was like, I don't think that's real. Unicorns are real, though. Really? Yeah. You know, I went to a drag queen convention, and there was a Mm. lot of unicorn-related merch and stuff. Like that's a whole thing for them, which I don't understand at all. I'm not sure where that was coming from. They're mystical creatures. Majestic. That makes sense to me. 
And thank you guys for not asking me why I was at the drag queen convention. It I just kind of happened. It. I thought about it, but you know, we're just not going to get into it. Everybody it likes happened. what they like. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for being so reminded of my lifestyle. But uh, no, in reality, I was just like, my friend was like, do you just want to go? It's like down the street. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. I mean, every event should be open to everybody. Mm. One sure. of my less popular vlogs, though, seems like my fans didn't really want to see me uh, go. Was <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was the title? Something like I went to the drag queen convention. Did, what was the thumbnail? picture of me big gay flag in the background or something <laughs> like that i forget oh my god it's actually my first day wearing fashion over for them so really? that was like and i was wearing all pink outfits so i was like i kind of have to go just because i'm wearing the right fit That's right lit. now yeah well there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right so what's what's you guys' plan going forward in terms of what what you guys are going to drop and what the people should be excited for um our ep's dropping august 9th sarati's playlist you feel me gotta mm. start at the origin where we came from that's what you went with for the name yeah, yes Sarati's uh, playlist. so it's a nice. collection of five songs that have different moods you nice. know coming from our perspective or just mm -hmm. our fans like Females, whether it's uplifting, getting to the bag, getting broken, yeah, just all types of stuff. Our favorite thing we like to say: you can twerk and cry at the same time. To our EP, mm -hmm. you can. Yes. yes. There you go. That makes a lot of sense. Beautiful. I've, I've definitely seen my girlfriend twerk and cry. See, within, it's a thing. Not the exact same time, yeah. but like within. <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes of each other. Yeah, it yeah. could definitely go down. The yeah, emotional yeah. roller coaster is People real. People were like, is that a thing? Like our mom was even like, is that a thing? We're like, yeah. Like we went to Pandora and she was like. There was one of the reps there, and she was like, "Yeah, I've turked and cried before." Really? Yeah, it's a thing. That's crazy. You're so hurt, but you're like, but you love the song. I remember the future used to have bars where you'd be basically talking about like being in the club, throwing money, holding back tears. Yeah, yeah see? it's the same vibe, you know. Yeah. Like you're, like, you're at the height of your, <laughs> yeah, but you still gotta let it out. You still yeah. gotta be a human. It's a whole bunch of emotions going <laughs> together. So the EP we got visuals falling after that. Mm -hmm. um, merch. Mer yes, merch, which you will get. Oh. <laughs> we'll send him a jumper. Need that. And um, hopefully, like a college tour, high school tour. Yeah, all that stuff. You guys stuff. still do the high schools, though? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. We have to. That's where like a lot of our fans are. Like, really? Middle school, college, and high school. They're everywhere, but the most active, because you know, social media, mm. high school. Yeah. I remember when Blueface first came out, and he was mm -hmm. always having videos of him just going to call, going to high schools, just performing on top of the car. And I was thinking, I'm like, man, that's smart, because realistically, yeah. mm -hmm. it's like that's where your diehard fan base yeah. is gonna come from, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're gonna grow up with you too, so. Mm -hmm. Although I do remember a lot of musicians coming to my schools when I was a kid and just not really making that much of an impression on me. <laughs> but I mean, at least um, they have a chance. He did. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, Sarati, it was amazing having you guys Thank on you. here. Thank you. Very informative. It was a good conversation. Um, and definitely go check their stuff out. Search them up on YouTube, Instagram, all bow, that. Bow, bow. Sarati. You guys can figure it out. Yeah. Sarati, no jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, and subscribe. Yay! Pow.